fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of a great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Jim Brady left the general store with a few supplies and walked toward the hitch rack in front of the sheriff's office. Jim, with his wife Molly and his little girl, had come to Rockton just the month before and had staked a small claim in the hills. As he passed the sheriff's office, a handbill posted out front took his eye. He stopped to read it. As he stood staring at the handbill, a voice behind him read it aloud. What did for murder? Man known as Dr. James Bradford, about five feet ten, dark wavy hair, dark mustache and Van Dyke beard, about 35 years of age, communicate with Sheriff at Silver City, reward. You know, Brady, if you had wavy hair, of course your hair is close cropped. And if he was a doctor... Go on, Sheriff. Well, like I was saying, if you had a mustache and one of them Van Dyke kind of beards, I'm saying if, mind you, then I might be suspicious. See here, Sheriff. I, I don't know what put the idea into your head that I might in any way resemble Jim, the man. Jim, you're a likable kind of chap. You do talk educated and all... But uh, as long as you stick to your mining, I guess I haven't got any call to say you are that, Dr. Bradford. My name is Jim Brady, Sheriff. And I am a miner, as you know. Sure, I know. You see, I'm kind of the type that lets sleeping dogs lie. But then again, it taint fitting for a sheriff to let a killer run around loose if he's got a mind to catch up with him. That's right, Sheriff. If I come across anyone answering that description on the handbill, I'll let you know. Guess I have to get along home now. Goodbye. Be seeing you, Brady. Good luck with your mining. Thanks, Sheriff. Thanks very much. Is it? Get up, boy.
Meanwhile, Dan Reed, nephew of the Lone Ranger, was riding along the trail from town toward the ranger's camp when he heard an unusual sound off to one side. <laughs> ho, ho, Victor, ho, boy, ho. <laughs> Why, it's a little girl, steady boy. <clears throat> what are you doing away out here alone? I'm lost. My pony ran away. Nighttime's coming. And I'm afraid. I want to go home. There, now, don't cry. I'll get you home. What's your name? My name's Anne. And I live with my daddy and mama. And he's a miner. He told me so. I see. What's your daddy's name, Anna? His name's Jim Brady. That's just what he told me. Jim Brady. Oh, I know where he lives. Oh, do you? Honest? Uh-huh. And, and will you take me home? Will you? Yeah, sure, I'll take you home. Oh. Come on, you can ride on my horse with me. Later, dusk was falling as Jim Brady rode up to his small place in the hills. Before he could rein up, his wife Molly came running from the open doorway to meet him. Jim. Oh, Jim. Oh, oh. Is it? <sighs> Molly. What's the matter? It's Anna. She's been gone all afternoon. Gone? Gone where? I don't know. I've ridden in several directions, but I couldn't find her. I've been nearly frantic. She went off on her pony while I was busy inside. Jim, what can we do? I'll get some men from town. We'll search for her. Hurry, Jim, hurry. It's getting dark, and if she gets... Lo Listen. Someone coming. Jim. Jim, look. Look. Someone's bringing Anna home. Oh, thank heaven. Oh, oh, Victor, oh, my. Whoa. Daddy. Oh, Mama. Oh, Anna, darling. Here. I'll lift you down. Oh, Daddy. I was lost all by myself. There, there, honey. You're safe now. Why, look, Jim. That's a mere boy. So I see. Well, what's your name, son? I'm Dan Reed, sir. Glad to know you, Dan. I'm Jim Brady. This is my wife. How do you do? Hello, Dan. We'll always be grateful to you for bringing Anna back to us. Won't you dismount I and really come I really can't, in? Mrs. Brady. My friends will be waiting for me, so I'll have to leave now. Promise you'll come back to see us, son. Oh, you will come back, Dan, won't you? Oh, please do. I'll be glad to. If Anna's pony doesn't come back tonight, I'll search for it tomorrow. I know about where to look. Oh, will you find him, will you? I will if I can, Anna. I'll see you tomorrow. Remember... You'll always be welcome, Dan. Be sure to come. Goodbye. Bye for now. Come on, Victor. That night around the campfire, Dan told the Lone Ranger and Tonto of the incident. The Bradys are awfully nice people. You'd both like them. They're, the, they're sort of different from other people around here. Oh, what makes you say that, Dan? Well... For one thing, they talk like educated people. I see. Didn't you say he's a miner? Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, when little Anna spoke of that, she, she was funny about it. Funny? What do you mean? Well, she said her father was a miner, that he told her so. When I asked her father's name, she said it was Jim Brady, that he had told her so. It sounded a little strange to me. Yes, it does seem strange. Ah, me think little girl know father's name. Not have to be told. Yes, that's right, Toto. What else seems strange to you, Dan? Oh, I notice little things like you've taught me to do. For instance, I noticed that while Mr. Brady was talking to me, he kept stroking his chin, sort of pulling at it. And then I noticed his hands. They weren't the hands of a miner. I see. I'm glad you've learned to be so observing, Dan. Ah, him learn lesson well. Do you think it's all right for me to be friendly with the Bradleys? I do like them very much. Why, of course, Dan... See them as often as you like. In fact, from what you tell me, I'm very much interested in the Bradys myself, especially the father. During the following week, Dan saw the Bradys every day, and they looked forward to the visits from the boy they had come to like so well. Late one afternoon, Jim Brady was washing up for an early supper when Anna, who was watching from the window, exclaimed joyfully, Oh, here comes Dan! Here comes Dan. That's fine, Anna. Maybe if you ask him, he'll stay and eat with us. Oh, do you think so, Daddy? I like him. Oh, we all do, dear. Dan's a fine boy. I'll open the door. 
Inspector. Hello, Dan. Hello. Come on in. Hello there, Dan. Hello, Dan. Here's the sugar you wanted from town, Mrs. Brady. Dan, it was sweet of you to bring that out for us. Sure was, Dan. <laughs> You've become like one of the family. Thanks, sir. Well, I have to be going. Oh, but Daddy said you might stay for supper if I asked you, Dan. Oh, I can't, Anna. I have to oh, carry some geez. news to my friends. See, there's a lot of excitement in town. Really? What's happened? Lots of people are dying from some kind of fever. And the only doctor has it worst of all. I, uh, I'm sorry. I, I knocked the basin to the floor. Jim, you, you heard what Dan said? Yes. Yes, I heard, Molly. There's nothing we can do about it. But, Daddy, will you... Quiet, Anna. Yes, Daddy. Uh... I'll go along now. I'll see you soon again. Goodbye. Goodbye, Dad. Goodbye, son. Jim. All those poor people. Molly. I said there's nothing we can do. Come on, Victor. Riding on to the Lone Ranger's camp. Dan told the Lone Ranger and Tonto about the epidemic in Rockton and of his visit to the Bradys. Leaving Dan and Tonto in camp, the Lone Ranger mounted his great stallion silver and rode toward town. Soon, he drew rein before the sheriff's office. Oh, silver horse. Steady, easy, big fellow. Stay where you are and reach. Put down your gun, Sheriff. I'm here to help. Get masked. How do I know you're not... This will tell you... Well, that's a silver bullet. Does that mean anything to you? I'll say it does. Just forget I draw it on you. So you come to help, eh? Yes, that's right. How bad is the epidemic? Oh, mighty bad. Old Doc Willis passed on, leaving us without a doctor within a couple of hundred miles or more. Keep you sitting folks right and left. Oh, that is bad. Uh, what's this handbill tacked on the wall, sir? Oh, that. Eh? Had one like it outside, but it got ripped down. That's a notice about Dr. James Bradford, wanted for murder. Oh, I see. Too bad he didn't ride this way from Silver City. Even if he had come out this way, you don't think he'd stick his neck in the noose by helping, do you? Well, that would depend upon the type of man he was underneath. Well, no use wishing. But we sure got to get busy and do something before half the town dies off. Yes, that's right. I'll try to find the nearest doctor. Uh, it would be a godsend if you'd find one, mister. While I'm hunting a doctor, I wish in your capacity as sheriff you'd send this telegraph message. There, that'll do. Hey, I can't see where you want to find that out now. But if you see, so I'll send it. Thanks. I'll be seeing you soon again. Adios. Adios. Steady, big fella. One silver. One silver. Whoa, steady. He must hurry. It's good to come. He's a big fella. Why? What's the matter, Toto? It's Dan. Him very sick. Dan? Ah, uh, him have fever. Talk out of head. Come on. How long has he been like this? I've been gone only an hour. Ah, but him get sick soon after you leave. Get bad plenty fast, Kim Kimasabi. He's got what the others have. Can't find water. So hot. So tired. Me so... give him water. Him not know. Him need Dr. Kimasabi. Yes, yes. We've got to get a doctor in soon. Ah, fever get worse. Yes, I know. Otto, if I don't get a doctor for Dan within the next couple of hours, I'm afraid he... He won't pull through. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. As the Lone Ranger voiced the fear that was in his mind, he and Tonto stood and for a moment stared into each other's eyes. Then the Lone Ranger spoke again. Tonto, stay here and do what you can for Dan until I get back. And where you go, Kimosabe? Going after a person I feel sure can help. Yes, sir. Tonto, do all him can for Dan. I know you will, Tonto. Said it easy. Right now, we'll trust in Providence. One, two, three. A short time later, Jim Brady and Molly were sitting in the living room of their home. Anna was already in bed sleeping. Jim sat staring at the floor. Finally, Molly spoke. Jim, dear. What is it, Molly? You're thinking about those poor people in town, aren't you? I guess I was. An epidemic's a bad thing. Yes. Especially when it can be helped. Molly, please. But, Jim, I... I just can't bear to have... Now, I'll go to the door, dear. Yes? Who... Oh. Uh, please don't be frightened. I have my own reason for being masked, but I'm not an outlaw. Well, what do you want? I'm looking for Mr. Jim Brady. Who is it, Molly? Jim, it's... Tell him a... it's a friend of Dan's. A friend of Dan's? Come right in, please. Well, thank you. Say, what is this? Who Jim, are... this is one of Dan's friends. Remember, he spoke of a friend who wore a mask. Yes. Yes, I do remember. Is anything wrong? Very much so, Mr. Brady. It's Dan... He's been suddenly stricken with fever. Oh, no. Yes, it's true. Where is he? In our camp. But he should be indoors. He should have immediate attention. That's right. Will you come to him? But what can I do? I'm not Jim, a... it's Dan. You said he's like one of us. Dan thinks a great deal of you, Jim. He trusts you. I trust you. Well, I... All right, I'll go with you. Molly, get my kit... You need quinine. It's right here in the cupboard. Here it is, dear. Thanks. I'm ready. Good. Come on. And I hope we get there in time. The Lone Ranger returned to the camp with Jim Brady. Then, as time dragged slowly by... Jim gave his every attention to Dan as the Lone Ranger and Tonto stood near watching, waiting, hoping. It was nearly midnight when Jim stood up and approached the Lone Ranger. Well, he'll be all right now. That good. Thank you, Dr. Bradford. Bradford? I thought perhaps you knew. Yes, and after this, of course, your secret will be safe with us. Well... What are you going to do now? I'm riding to town. There's lots of work to be done there. Even though you know it may mean yes. that the... Even if it comes to that. I've tried hard, but I can't forget that I took an oath as a doctor. Shall we go now? Gladly, Jim. I know you'd do what you could to help those dying people. Uh, me bring horses. We'll move Dan to our house in the morning. He'll rest comfortably till then. I think Dan knew, too. He'll be proud of you, Jim. Come, sir. Come, sir. He must have you. Me stay with Dan. Yes, Tonto. Look after him carefully. Easy, Silver. Steady. See you in the morning, Tonto. Come on, Silver. Get up, boy. Arriving in Rockton, Jim and the Lone Ranger set about organizing the people to fight the epidemic. All the suffering were taken to the town hall, which was set up as a temporary hospital. Urgent telegraph messages were sent to other towns, asking that special couriers be sent with quinine. It was dawn when Jim stepped outside the town hall for a momentary breath of air upon the insistence of the Lone Ranger, who still worked inside helping the sick. As Jim leaned against a post on the porch, the sheriff approached. Well, Jim, my guess was right after all. You are a dog, aren't you? 
You should know by this time, Sheriff. Well, he sure surprised all of us, Sheriff. Jim sure deserves a medal for what he's done. Yep, him and that masked man in there. Hey, you gotta admit, Jim, you just about shaved this town. We got a doctor coming over from Silver City to help you. Should get here by tonight. Fine. Jim, you must know quite a few folks in Silver City yourself, don't you? That's right, I do. Sheriff, there's nothing you or anyone else can do or say that'll take away the satisfaction I got from doing what I've done during the night. Even if you hang for it? What? That's right. Even if I hang for it. Hey, what's that all about, Jim? Yeah, what are you driving at, Sheriff? Well, nobody's ever going to hang Doc Brady. Oh, no. That's yeah. right. It wouldn't be Doc Brady, they'd be hanging. Well... You know, Doc, you're sure making it awful tough on me for when I'll have to do my duty. <laughs> I'll do my duty, Sheriff. You do yours. But there's one favor you can do for me, if you will. If there's anything I can do without going against my sworn duty, I'll do it for him. All I ask is that you make no move against me until I've had a chance to visit at home this afternoon with my family. Things will be under control here by that time. Hey, what's he got against you, Jim? Sheriff, we don't stand to see Jim bothered. No. Uh, tell us what it's all about. You'll all know in good time. But right now, this is between Jim and me. Well, you haven't given an answer to my request. Of course, you can go out home for a spell. Thank you, Sheriff. That's all I wanted to know. Now I'll go join the masked man and get to work. <laughs> It was afternoon when the Lone Ranger and Jim rode to the camp to move Dan to Jim's home. A buckboard was used for the purpose, and soon Dan lay resting quietly in one of Jim's comfortable beds. His condition was much improved, and he smiled as he saw all the friendly faces around him. Uh, Tallow tells me you saved my life, mister. My real name is Dr. Bradford, Dan. Jim, it's good to hear you say that. Now I can tell people our real name, can I, Daddy? I... I guess the name Anna told me was wrong. Would you like to tell us why you changed your name, Jim? I thought you knew. The handbill downtown You was... didn't commit murder, Dr. Bradford. Oh, you really believe in him then? Why, of course. And so does Dan and Toto. Tell them what happened, Jim. Back in Silver City. All right. I was called in on a case. Found I had to perform an operation for an appendix which had burst. The patient developed peritonitis and died... Her husband swore publicly that he'd kill me because he felt I had killed his wife. Yes, it, it was terrible. I paid no attention to his threats, but unfortunately he was ambushed along the trail that went out our way. He was shot in the back. Knowing everyone would blame me, I left with my family and came here, changing my name, as you know. The bad men wanted to put my daddy in jail, but we didn't want them to. I, I wish I could tell those people how mistaken they are. Isn't that right? Well, it'll all take its course, I suppose. There's not much I can do about it. We won't let them take you away, Daddy. Oh, hush, child. I... Jim, I... I think several men have ridden up outside. I'll go talk to them. No, I'll bring them all right in here. I'll be right back. Good afternoon, Jim. All of you come right in. Well, look, here we are. I brought the boys over so they could get in on things. All right, Sheriff. What are you going to do? You can't take Dr. Dr. Bradford away after what he did for the town. Now, hold your horses, son, and listen. When a doctor or a sheriff either takes an oath to uphold their bond and duty, then they got to do it. That's why Doc went to town and did what he did. Even though he knew I was suspecting him already of being Dr. Bradford, wanted for murder in Silver City. Daddy didn't do any such thing. Well, quiet down, everybody. Just a moment, Sheriff, and all of you. It isn't necessary to come here and hold court, as it were. My husband has expressed willingness to go back to Silver City and face the law. Please be kind and not discuss this further here. Sheriff, may I say something? Sure, sure, go right ahead. I know you mean well, but I think you should get to the point with our friends, the Bradfords. What do you mean, get to the point? Yes, I... I don't understand. The sheriff knows exactly what I know about the whole affair, but I'll let Dan hand you the news. Anna, 
you give that bit of paper to your daddy. Oh, may I? What is this, Daddy? What does it say? Why, it looks like a telegraph message. I, I didn't get a chance to read it. I'll see what it's... Chris Reservation. Bradford Clearman. Molly. Read it aloud, Jim. I, I'm afraid I... I can't. Now I'll read it for you. It says, Your request for information regarding Dr. Bradford case received. Bradford cleared of crime by confession of dying man who committed the murder from ambush. If whereabouts of Dr. Bradford known, please advise him of same. Signed, G.L. Worth, Sheriff, Silver City. Oh, Jim, dear, I knew things would turn out all right. <laughs> That's sure good news, Doc. A town could use a good medical man like you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Golly, I'm glad for you, Dr. Bradford. Isn't it wonderful? My daddy didn't do whatever it was they said he did. <laughs> the wonderful thing to me is that you found yourself, Jim, before you knew about that telegraph message. And that came about through the understanding and wisdom of Dan's masked friend who... Where is he? I know. I saw him sneak out with that Indian. But he whispered to me, he did. He said, take care of Dan. I will, too. He's gone, but I still don't know who he is. Well, even Dan has never told well, me. I can tell you that. Dr. Jim? Wait, oh, wait, let me tell him. Anna, please. I know who he is, Mommy, because I heard someone say. Say what, honey? That he's the Lone Ranger. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.